estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não Let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause My friends, we will have a wonderful service. Today is a day of blessings, a day to open up our hearts and receive the amazing manifestations of the power of God. The Lord God will do wonderful things in our midst. There is no doubt about it. We just have to believe in the things that He promises. When the Lord promises, you can rest assured that His great power will do the work. But Dr. Suarez, how long does God's work last? Good question, brethren. Do the revelations have to be renewed periodically? The healings, the deliverances? The writer of the book of Ecclesiastes answered this question. Let's read it. Chapter 3, verse 14. When the word speaks, it is authoritative and it cannot be any different. The author of the book was King Solomon, guided by God, and he said, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. That's it. Some things are temporary. Other things are eternal. So God's word is eternal. The revelation that God gives to you, you don't need to fear it because it will last forever and ever. It will be in your heart. Jesus says, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. So we have to work and beseech God, seek Him, pay attention to the sermon, not to what the pastor says. What I say here is what I understand from God's word, what God gave to me, and then I give it to you. But that which you understand God is giving to you. It is individual. Our responsibility to God has no mediators. The only mediator is the Lord Jesus, not the pastor. Not me and no other man is. The only mediator there is between man and God is the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, who is the Word of God. When God speaks to you, it will never be changed. It will certainly last forever. It's eternal. It has no beginning and no end. God has put you in one of His paths, the paths He chose to work on. The more revelations you have, the better you will be. So come frequently to church, mainly on Sundays. Bring your Bible a notepad for you to make notes that is very important. Five, 10, 20, 50 years may go by. You'll remember one day God spoke something to me. It's still in force. And you will call on the power of God at that very moment and it will work. There's more to read. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Don't try to add anything. Don't try to add anything to what God does. It needs no improvement. Whatever you add to it, you will ruin it. Stick to his revelation. There's no need for you to say, I'm a wise man. I can solve difficult things and enigmatic letter. It seems that, that enigmatic letters are not usual anymore. When I was little, they were common. We received an almanac with an enigmatic letter and we tried to unravel the mystery. I'm an intelligent man. Don't bother. Stick to what God speaks to your heart. Take your mind off of it. It's your spirit that mediates, understands, and that's enough. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. Oh, but I don't agree with God. Who are you to say such a thing? He's a supreme being. He is wise, not just a little wise. He is the all-knowing God. If we gather all the wise men of the world from all of the eras, if we could get their minds together and create a super wise mind with all their capacity, oh, it would be nothing compared to God. It would be such a waste of time. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. So what God gives to you will cause you to respect him. Don't add to it or take so, if God speaks and you don't agree with it, stop that nonsense. Say, I didn't used to agree, but you have explained 
Everything the Lord does lasts forever. Now that you know it, whenever you're in a hard situation, trust in Him and God will give you victory in the name of Jesus. Where is Fernandez? Fernandez, I'd like a song that would be a good conclusion to this message here. And God has given us a few songs. Which one do you have in your heart? I think the one from the fourth CD, which says that sins deletes my dreams. It's a relevant song. If we let our guard down, things are... Dreams are deleted. They are shaken. Plans fade away and the person begins to suffer terribly. Let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Hallelujah. This is a warning for us. Sin deletes our dreams. Our prayers don't reach the Father. Let's get right with God. O pecado apaga os sonhos Risca o nome do céu Faz os dias serem tristes E do inferno me torna réu Quem atravessa o grande muro Será mordido por uma serpente Mesmo que dê muito duro Para a vida ser diferente Pare de se sujar, fuja sempre do pecado O erro pode parecer monstruoso, mas é a armadilha do dia Quem peca vai sofrer, vai, vai sofrer Sua consciência vai doer Pare de se sujar, fuja sempre do pecado O erro pode parecer gostoso, mas é a armadilha do dia A consciência vai doer O inimigo não lhe pode tocar Pois o muro é o próprio Deus Que queima sem parar Seja responsável ao se protejar Vença a sua peleja E desfrute do amor celestial O inimigo não lhe pode tocar Pois o muro é o próprio Deus Que queima sem parar Seja responsável ao se protejar Vença a sua peleja E desfrute do amor celestial O grande muro Será mordido por uma serpente Mesmo que dê muito duro Não fará a vida ser diferente Pare de se sujar Fude sempre do pecado O erro pode parecer gostoso Mas é a armadilha do dia Quem peca vai sofrer Vai, vai sofrer sua consciência vai doer Pare de se sujar Fuja sempre do pecado O erro pode parecer gostoso Mas é a armadilha do diabo Quem peca vai sofrer Vai, vai sofrer Sua consciência vai doer O inimigo não lhe pode tocar Pois o muro é o próprio Deus Que queima sem parar Seja responsável ao se protejar Vença sua peleja e desfrute do amor celestial O inimigo não lhe pode tocar Pois o muro é o próprio Deus Que queima sem parar Seja responsável ao se protejar Vença sua peleja e desfrute do amor celestial Pare de se sujar, fuja sempre do pecado o erro pode parecer gostoso, mas é a armadilha do dia Quem peca vai sofrer, vai, vai sofrer Sua consciência vai doer Aleluia! The secret is to stop! <laughs> Glory to God! If you need one, you'll see a great testimony. These children wouldn't exist. There are thousands. In one of the countries we've reached, where the local religion is very closed, 
We preach there almost in hiding, very carefully. More than 60 grace babies were born. To people who had no children, that is the work of God. Glory to God, you are helping us there because you who are a sponsor, you are helping our missions around the world. Play the video with you of the Grace Babies. I couldn't have babies due to a great amount of myomas I had. I was 43 years old. It was my first child, my first pregnancy. I had high blood pressure. In May, I went to church and the pastor called me to receive a prayer, all women who wanted to get pregnant. So on August the 18th, my period was late. I did a test and the result was positive. It was a high-risk pregnancy. A doctor told me that I could die during labor, that maybe she would not survive or she would be born with Down syndrome. And I would rebuke it all the time, firm in faith. The day Deborah was born, she was premature and the only baby that refused being fed with the bottle. I had to put her to my breast and things went back to normal. God bless my mother's life. She had just one chance to have me. I named her Deborah because Dr. Suarez preached about the song of Deborah in Judges 5, when Deborah sang with Barak and the people worshipped God voluntarily. Today I can worship the Lord voluntarily. She has accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of her life. I did accept Him, right? So I am a daughter of God. I am no longer that old creation. Now I am a new creation. It's a miracle. Deborah is a sponsor now. In this way, I evangelize every child, every adult, until the world is filled with churches. I know it was God. I'm happier and more firm in the Lord Jesus. The number of mothers who can declare, my baby is a fruit of God's grace, is countless. My husband and I tried to have a baby for six years. Every time I got pregnant, I had a miscarriage. We almost had no hope, then I was zapping through channels and suddenly the program's pick-up friend was on the air and I decided to watch it. From that day on I kept on watching it, always praying, beseeching God to give me my blessing. Then on April of 2017 I found out that I was pregnant. I was afraid something might happen, but my faith in God was greater. And on December 30th, now my little boy was born, he's very healthy. I've become a sponsor because just like the program reached out to me, I wanted to reach out to other people. I can't thank you enough for the prayers, for your support. Thank you so much. I felt truly welcomed by the program. Thank you all so much. Glory to God. With the prayer by Dr. Suarez, beseeching the Lord, a pregnancy, because he said he would pray for married women, that wanted to have children. After a few miscarriages, I cried out to the Lord for a blessing. Then that blessing was given in the Lord's timing in the name of Jesus. My Beatrice is a fruit of grace, the grace of God. Let us applaud Jesus. Let's resume the verse we were reading. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Brethren, hold fast to this scripture. Whatever he does lasts long. Oh, but it was a high-risk pregnancy. She was 43. He wouldn't get you in trouble. It's the enemy who harasses you and you become afraid. No, if God gives it, it's mine. Your attitude is very important. Whatever God does shall be forever. And if he's giving you, believe it. Doctors can speak of the natural side of things. I speak of the spiritual things. Let God be true, but every man a liar, says the Bible. And what else? Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. Don't add to it nor take from it. God does it that men should fear before him. Rest assured that the blessing God gives 
is meant for you to fear before him forever. Ecclesiastes 3.14 is the message for you today. Within a while, we will pray and the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. I traveled to Africa and went to a city called Durban. It was the first time I held a meeting there. We hadn't done it before. We managed to broadcast a program on TV on Sundays at 5 in the morning. It's so early, but we have a good attendance. God worked there. Durban is a big city. There's a man there who owns a shopping mall, and that man, he was converted. He built a church and gave it to the pastor. This is so beautiful. And the pastor lent that church to us. Play the video, will you? Dr. Suarez's visit to Durban in South Africa was marked by the understanding of the Word of the Lord God, which transforms people's life. If the Word of God is in your heart, the Word of God, you have the power because the Word of God has the power to do all the things it announces. So with power, faith, and understanding, we can begin our beautiful journey with Christ in which the sick are healed in the name of Jesus. In, in the arm. arm. I have pain in my shoulder too. How long did you have this pain? I feel it every now and then. But can you do everything now? I was operated on my heart 10 years ago. Uh -huh. So I also had pain in my chest and in my arm. But is the pain gone now? Now it's gone. Glory to God. The pain is gone. I suffered for a long time. Was it a time. pain in your arm? It was on my shoulder. For how long? For three or four years. Now the pain is gone. Is the pain gone? Can you move it? I couldn't walk because of the pain. Are you better now? Yeah. But for how long have you had this problem? 17 years. 17 years? How were you walking before the prayer? I would sleep a lot. I couldn't stand up. You couldn't no. stand up. So follow me now. Come after me. Let's go walking around here. Walk with me. Walk with me in the name of Jesus. Follow me. You can run now. You can run. You are fine now. Are you okay now? I'm free. He's free. Glory to God. What was your problem? I had a problem in my knee, uh -huh. but now the pain is gone. The pain yes, is gone. in the name of Jesus. How were you walking with that pain? The pain was very strong during the night. At night, but are you free now? I'm free, yes. Is the pain gone? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I suffered from dementia, now it's good. Did you feel that dementia is gone? Yes. Is your mind back to normal? Yes. What's your name? My name? Yes. Virginia. Virginia. How old are you? I'm 78 years 78. old. 78? Sorry, 72. 72. But one day you'll be 78. When were you born? August 28th, 1946. Is that right? Yes. Oh, glory to God. All the information is correct. Is she your relative? She's my wife. Very well. Tell me, how long have you been married? Fifty years. Let me pray for you. God, thank you. Heal her completely. Go now, all the works of the evil one. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord Jesus strengthens us, transforms us, and heals us. Believe in his name and receive these blessings. Glory to God. So awesome, brethren. Let us applaud Jesus. Let me convey a message to you. The message is about Abraham, and within minutes we will pray together. And it's in Genesis chapter 17. Abraham left Ur of the Chaldeans because God told him to, to a land that God would show him. His father and his nephew joined him. He stopped at a city called Haran, around a thousand miles from where he was. He traveled on foot or riding an animal. It took a long time. He stayed there. His father died there. When his father died, he was 75 years old. He left and went to Canaan. When he was in Canaan for 10 years, he went to Egypt, then returned, almost lost his wife, then five kings. He defeated them all. 
from Sodom, Gomorrah, and from other cities as well. His nephew lived in that place. Then he heard his nephew was taken captive. He prayed to God who told him to set his nephew free and take his 318 servants that were born at home, not the ones who were bought. This represents an important message for us. When, when I convey the revelations I have, it helps to illuminate you, but you must obtain your own revelation. That one that God gives you is the one you must use, not mine. He took the servants born at home. He succeeded, and when he was returning, the priests and kings of Salem appeared to him. He was... Salem would become Jerusalem. His name was Melchizedek. And he blessed Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tithe of everything. The spoils of war were his. The king of Sodom said, Abraham, you can retain the rest, 90%. I just want the persons. No way. I have a commitment to the eternal God. I won't take anything from you. Not the strap of a sandal or a cord of gold. It's all yours. So you won't say that you made Abraham rich. It pleased God who appeared to him and said, Abraham, I am your shield. I was the one who protected you. He hadn't lost one servant in the war against the four kings, kings who had huge armies. Abraham had 318 servants and three friends who had joined him. I am your shield and I am your reward, a great reward. So he said, God, I am childless with my servant. Eliezer from Damascus, he is my heir. God said, no, you have one, but Sarah couldn't. He was 86 and Sarah was 76 or 75. He was 85 or 86 and they had no child. Sarah said, take my maid servant, sleep with her and her child will be mine. He did that, a wrong move. After sleeping with the maid Hagar, Ishmael was born, who is father of the Arabs. God said, this is wrong. I mean you and your wife. But when his son was born in his house, Isaac Fourteen years later, the father of the Jews never, in 4,000 years, they got along. You see the result of sin. Be careful so as not to fall. But in that case, he fell because he heard Sarah. Then he was seeking God. There was no way out. Well, that story is in chapter 16. Let's go to chapter 17 or we won't have much time. I talked about her in the previous service. It is written... When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. What did he want to convey? There are no hindrances for me, Abraham. I fulfill what I promise. A long time has already gone by. It's almost 13 or 14 years. And you didn't walk in my presence. What does walking in God's presence mean? In the revelation he gives, that's where his presence is. His power is there for him to do his work. Many Christians do not walk before him. They enjoy the sermon, but act like the unbelievers in their businesses. They, they, they look at what they shouldn't. They do wrong things. They speak foul words. Sunday they come to church and hear God's word, but never learn to walk in the presence of God. What God says in the sermon is for you to retain. From then on, that means God is with you. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it, says the Lord God. Abraham, you have to walk before me and do other things. I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. God has no flaws. So Abraham had to walk before him and be blameless. Dr. Swadis, I am not blameless. You don't want to. Dr. Swadis, I will never be so you don't understand God's word. You must walk in his presence, his revelation. In that which God showed you, you must be blameless. If he doesn't show you more, don't try to go any further. Don't you add anything. But I'll kneel down to pray every day. Did he tell you to kneel down to pray? Did you learn it in the Bible? Some verses mention it, but not to attain blessings. So I will sell my house and God will prosper me. Does he say so in the Bible? Be based on the Bible. You must be blameless concerning the revelation that God gives. Don't add anything or take anything away. Then you will succeed. What did Abraham do when he heard that? Let's read it here. God said these words to him. I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. When you walk, when you walk, before God and you're blameless, he does that. 
What did Abraham do? Then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, he bowed down, fell on his face, and said, I got it. Thank you. It's so easy. But we have to learn these things. So pay close attention. It's not what I say that you have to do, because that was for me, but I must convey it to you. But within this revelation, God says things for you to understand, and each person has an understanding. Walk before God and be blameless. Abraham knelt down. He actually fell on his face. And what did the Lord do after Abraham acknowledged him? And God talked with him, saying, then God gave him more messages again. This is what must happen. We don't have more time, but I covered it before, and there's more to say in the next services. Now, let me pray with all of you, brethren. God, today is a day of blessings at this church. It's a day, Lord, in which we are getting to understand simple things. They're not complicated, which we must have as a light beam in our life as a compass that will show us the north, that will show us where we are and what we have to do. God, we want to do what Abraham did. He used to be Abraham, but later you changed it. We want to walk before you and be blameless within the revelation. You wouldn't ask anything that wasn't perfectly possible to be accomplished. So we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I want to say a prayer for all women that don't have children and for those who do. It's not for you to have more children, actually, but to bless those who do and to bless the children you have. They may be infants, teenagers, or may even be senior citizens. They may be parents, grandparents, I don't know but they're your children. I'll ask God to bless them because it's so very sad when one's children do not understand the word of God and you love them. When the Lord Jesus returns, he who is not born again and he will return anytime, he won't ascend with him. There's no use to scream, Jesus, it's my son. So let us pray now for God to bless them and endow them with spiritual discernment for these children, for these young people and adults to understand. So you mothers, it was in your womb that you brought them into existence and with your understanding, you will cause them to be illuminated. Those who are not mothers will also stand up. And in my prayer, I will pray for all of you. So please stand up, all women now, and God will answer your requests. Don't be afraid that God will give you a child just because you'll stand up. God will not force anyone. God wants to bless you, you and your existing children. So bow your head and close your eyes now. God, I enter into your presence in the name of Jesus. There are many women at the church, many who are mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-great-grandmothers, and others who are starting their families now. Others have been married for quite some time, but they can't get pregnant. First, I pray for those who have children, who may be leading a very good life, but God, they don't have the necessary spiritual understanding. Many don't come to your house, Many of them have a twisted mind, Father, because of the allure of riches, concerned with the cares of this world, with the ambition for other things, and they have forgotten what really matters. The beginning of wisdom is to fear you, Lord. God, change their minds now. Open their understanding. Because you said in your word in Acts 16.31, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. So bring these people here to listen, to hear, to serve you, to be blessed. God, as to the married women now, who are not mothers, no matter how old they are, Sarah was 89 years old and 
Abraham was 99 years old when he understood that there's no problem for you. The problem is in man. That if man walks before you, and if he is blameless, you will do the work. God, these men do want to be mothers. By the way, God, you haven't made women by chance. You have prepared their body to conceive children. Even their nature is different than that of man. They have a love that men don't have, Lord. They have a way that men don't have. You gave them the gift of maternity, but some of them have a problem. Their tubes are obstructed. God, their ovaries have cysts. In some cases, the cysts are actually larger than the ovaries. Oh my God, I heard of an American woman who had a 60 kilogram cyst. Even the doctors were shocked by that. But God, you were so good that they removed the cyst, a sack that a man couldn't carry or would carry with great effort, and they preserved her ovaries. Thank you for this capacity, Lord. God, many women are watching me on TV now, and they are crying because they want to be mothers. God, the Bible says our children are your inheritance. They want this inheritance. Oh my God, come upon them just as you came upon Sarah and made her fertile. And she had a baby when she was 90 years old. God, do this for those women who are praying now and crying. Maybe women who have been married for 17, 20, 25, 30, 40 years. I don't know for how long, Lord. When you give blessings, you provide the tools. God, I need this blessing. If the problem is with the husband, heal the husband now. God, I join my prayer and my faith with the faith of these people. I paralyze all the actions of the enemy and I cast him out now. Evil, get out of these women of their husbands and get out of the children of those women who are mothers. In the name of Jesus, they are blessed. And you say, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the name of Christ and you know what you'll do now. Walk before the Lord and be blameless. And later, when we pray again, we'll be praying for the healing of all people. Let me remind you, I preach here on Saturday and on Sundays I preach here at 7, 9 and 11 a.m., 2 and 4 p.m. And Pastor Jaime at 8 p.m. when there's Holy Supper, he's here at 8 p.m. Well, let's watch the real life drama now, shall we? The old creation was very difficult. Nervous, I was always drinking with friends. My wife was already serving God, but I'd go to bars in my free time. I had no interest in God. I would call him to ask if he was at work. No, he was at the bar drinking. Then he would go to work, sometimes drunk. He arrived home late. A very long time ago, I was stabbed in my thigh and the injury also had an effect on my knee. I would cry in pain. I turned on the TV and I was flipping channels Dr. Suarez was preaching. He was praying actually. Suddenly, I felt my leg getting better. The following day, my leg was almost healed. I wasn't feeling any pain, but I didn't go to uh, the church after that. In 2012, distressed because of the loss of a relative, Joel went to a church. I gave my life to God in another church. I was baptized. He changed completely. Then I asked the Lord God to show me another ministry. In 2014, God showed him the Grace of God Church. I told him to go ahead. What really matters is to seek the Lord. So he went. And there I did learn to forgive, to ask for forgiveness. It was when my understanding opened with Dr. Suarez preaching. At the beginning of 2017, he began to feel a lot of pain. 
Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night and he wasn't there. He was in the bathroom sick. I was examined and the exams showed I had a kidney stone. It was on my left kidney. It was seven millimeters. The doctor said I should be operated on. Actually, the low intake of water, right? It's the main cause, but it's also associated with eating too much salt. If you decrease the ingestion of salt, you can decrease the chances of having stones formed in the kidneys. Usually patients present the symptoms of renal colic when the stone is bigger than five millimeters. In this case, it may end up causing pain. They will need a high dosage of painkillers to relieve the pain. I was a little worried about it, but I had faith that God would heal me without the need for surgery. On October 11th, 2017, Joel watched Speak Up Friend. I will pray saying, God, here is my glass, and in those people's homes, there's a glass as well. God, anoint this water now. Put your power, your energy in this water, in each molecule. I want these people blessed, including myself, Lord. I beseech you now. God, in the name of Jesus, I bless them. And I say, you are blessed in the name of Christ. I would do that every single night. Every night from Monday through Friday, I was firm in the faith and I began to feel better. I did feel better. So I did the requested exams for the doctor to see. The doctor looked at it and gave it back to me. It's all right, he said. I saw the result and I was delighted. I didn't expel it. It was gone as the exam shows. It was a great miracle in my life. It vanished. He sleeps well now. Thanks to the Lord, he's happy. After he experienced the power of God, Joel felt the urge to be a sponsor. I felt in my heart there was something I had to do. We see the miracles happening. We see the work of God being spread in the world. This work cannot stop. I won't stop sponsoring. It's so awesome to see people being healed. And I have my testimony as well. In fact, I'm the living proof of the miracle God did. Glory to God. You see, brethren, what if I wasn't there that day? What if I wasn't in the presence of God and didn't preach his word? There was someone who needed it. When I think of the work we do on television, the whole country being blessed, other countries being blessed, I am so happy with this work because we have to pay for our time slots and we pay dearly. This week, a man made us an offer. He approached us. He, um, he has a TV channel to reach the Arab world. He said, send me the programs and I'll broadcast them from Monday through Friday in the morning, in the afternoons too. I inquired the cost. Zero. There's no need to pay. <laughs> you see, he watched us and liked it. If it was good for him, it would be good for his people. Isn't it awesome? Our translator asked, what do we do? Oh, there's no need to ask, eh? Another person did the same thing. I said, God, spread this idea throughout the world because we are ready to send our programming to them. He said, just sign the permit, declaring I'm allowed to do it. I said, okay, this is certainly a great thing to happen here. But we do pay whatever we have to pay. If God sends us, we must go, brethren. I went to Durban recently and I didn't expect it to happen. Recently, we made a deal. The South African owner of the TV station told me, I only have the 5 a.m. time slot on Sundays. Will you get it? I said, yes, of course I will. I'll take this time slot. Let's sign the contract. God is always blessing us. If you're a sponsor, do not stop sponsoring this work. You are important before the Lord. If you've heard the calling, don't turn your back to God. Don't add or take away anything. If you haven't heard it, ask God to make you hear it because I invite only those who feel it in their heart. When God speaks to you, when he touches your heart, you inexplicably know the amount that Lord tells you so. Be faithful until your death. I would like you to fill out this form, fill it out, name and address, detach the slip. Name and address, detach the slip. If you're signing up as a result of something God said to you, write down your name, dash, then write job, business, children, whatever it is, husband, wife. God knows your heart. Just write one word. The other part you must take to the bank and make the deposit. By the way, if you can contribute as soon as the bank opens, 
It will help us a lot because it's a difficult time of the month, but we will overcome it in the name of Jesus. He is with us. So make sure to make the deposit. Dr. Swadis, I lost the bank slip. So write down what bank account number at the Ned Bank and the number of the agency. Go to any Ned Bank agency, go straight to the cashier and tell them, I want to make a deposit in this agency. What is the number? It is number 103910. 103910. And the account number? It's number 101 101191951. You at home, give us a call and become a sponsor. In Cape Town, call 27 plus 21 911 5676. The WhatsApp number is 27 079496937. Mrs. Eliana, are you at the Grace store? Yes, doctor. I didn't see you this morning. Where were you? <laughs> I was a little bit late, but I am here. That's <laughs> good. And the film of the month, Dr. Mrs. Eliana. Suarez, people have come to the Gray Store looking for this film, which has been released by Grace Films. It is called Reflections of Faith, and it shows people using faith to be completely blessed. After the service, our brethren will pay you a visit, so show it to them. Maybe it can be given as a present for those mothers who truly need it, the actions of God in their life. We have a store here and in Cape Town. You can access the Gray Store too, no matter where you are. You just need to call our numbers 27 plus 21 911 5676. The area code is 27. Again, 27 plus 21 911 5676. Don't forget the local code. Our website is on gracesouthafrica.com and our WhatsApp number is 27 07 9496 9037. And now let's talk about the Grace TV. It's something you should have in your household. Let's hear a testimony, shall we? Before I married, I'd watch the public TV channels. Sometimes I watched soap operas, but when we converted and then we married, I said, I don't want this in my home. I wanted my house to have a Christian environment. In 2015, my husband and I went through some hardships. So we prayed together and I watched the clip read. Then a singer sang, there's power in his name. And when I heard, let your heart not be troubled, it just clicked on me. It was something truly remarkable because after that, thanks to the Lord, we overcame that difficult situation. I've been subscribed to the Grace TV for five years and during this time, it's been a blessing. Grace TV is our true companion. I cannot find any word other than blessing to describe my home and my family. And the most important thing is our spiritual strengthening and learning God's Word. We have 60 channels, news, sports, children's channels for young people, for women and the whole family, and the evangelical channels for everybody. The evangelical package is so inexpensive, you can subscribe only to that package for you to be nourished. If you don't want to subscribe today, I recommend you can take this flyer home. If you decide to subscribe, just throw it away. You won't pay anything. When at home, pray. If you feel you should, the phone number is here. And you at home can call us now. Cape Town, 27 plus 21, 911 5676. I'll repeat it. It's 21 911 5676. Get the flyer and it won't cost a thing. And if you prayed and didn't feel it from God, there's no problem at all. You have to do is throw the flyer away. Otherwise, give us a call and we'll install it. That's how it works because we believe in what we do. God is with us in the name of Jesus. Now let me pray with you and you at home. Please join us now. God, our program is about to come to an end. I've prayed for women who can't have children and for their husband if the problem is with them. I prayed for the mothers who have children, children with problems who are not saved. Now I pray for everybody, wherever they are, who at this very moment need healing, deliverance. I rebuke all evil. I order it to leave in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen.